What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here, ladies and gentlemen. We have new updates from more model runs to talk to you guys about. We're going to go ahead and start with the 0Z to show you what's going on. This is for the 17th and the 18th as we are continuing to see more model runs of that tropical development I've been keeping an eye on, as well as some, more, some potential hurricane development down here in the eastern Pacific Ocean. We'll get to that in just a second, but according to the 0Z run, this thing... Basically goes over Cuba, makes landfall on the western tip as a Category 1 hurricane, according to the, what I'm looking at. If this thing moves over the Gulf of Mexico and then makes landfall on the Florida Peninsula, uh, Florida Panhandle, rather, and moves as a tropical storm through Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, through D.C., and those areas right there. Now, we're going to go ahead and show you the 850 millibar height and wind just to cross-check this real quickly. And as you can see, this does start having hurricane cane strength as it is approaching Cuba and Florida right here. Quickly loses that because of land interaction. But yeah, that's basically what we're looking at right there according to this. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the 6Z run from this, which is also kind of interesting because this thing still has it developing around the 16th and 17th, but it actually has it developing a little bit closer to the Gulf of Belize or so, which I find quite which I find quite imperative and a bit of an outlier, but it has been a bit of a growing one as well. So we have this thing organizing, developing, crosses the Yucatan Strait, as you can see right here, barely misses the Yucatan Peninsula, barely misses Cancun. This thing continues to strengthen in the Gulf of Mexico right here, gets down to like 962 millibars, which is around a high-end Category 2 hurricane if you took pressure by itself. It makes landfall near Galveston, right here and moves through Texas due to and starts weakening due to land interaction. And I want to go ahead and take a look at the 850 millibar heights and winds right here. And if you're taking a look at this like I am, those not, those winds are over 100 knots in some of these areas right here at 850 millibars, which is about 5,000 feet up. Convert that do the conversions and all that. That's about a category 2 hurricane right there. So definitely something interesting to take a look at right there. And the last run has been the quite most interesting of them all. The last run has this developing in the Caribbean Sea as usual around the 17th of June. And things start organizing, developing, becomes a Category 1 hurricane, makes landfall in Cuba. And then it actually jerks east. This is the most eastward run I have seen in quite a while, actually. This has it making landfall first in the Florida Keys, then around Monroe County in Florida, moving through Miami-Dade, Broward, those areas is around a Category 1 hurricane, starts strengthening and losing its tropical characteristics in the Atlantic Ocean, and that's the last we will hear of that. And that's taking a path not really similar, but a little bit further south than that of Hurricane Ian, which I find quite an interest, kind of interesting right there, but... We'll have to wait and see when it comes to that front on that front. We're going to go ahead and show you the 850 millibar height and winds right here. As you can see, this does make landfall as a hurricane in Cuba. And then, once again, as around a Category 1 in Florida right there. So, definitely something interesting right there to take a look at. And that's generally what I'm in agreement with intensity-wise. I think if we're going to see something happening, it's going to be around maybe a Category 1 hurricane, if not a 70-mile-per-hour tropical storm, considering all the factors that I am about to show you. So the first factor I'm going to show you is the Gulf of Mexico sea temperatures, as well as in that in the Caribbean Sea. If we're taking a look at the temperatures by themselves, we're looking at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius temperatures. These te uh, these waters are piping hot right now, especially when they're where this is potentially going to develop. It's around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius or so. So that's going to be very good early on. If you take a look at the OHC. I'm noticing more ocean heat content developing further to the south near where this thing may be developing right here. So, yeah, all uh, so yeah, that's all those factors are pretty good and the moisture aspect of it early on also, if you take a look at it, the moisture aspect is really good early on. We'll get to that in a second because this is where the downsides begin. The downside is is the wind shear and where this is going to develop, it's not going to be bad at all. So, my thinking is early on, if the storm can organize and continue to develop at a quick rate, it absolutely could do something. It could absolutely become a tropical storm, absolutely could be a hurricane. It just ha it just has a matter of time before it hits this shear over here. 
And if we show you the shear and this right here, the 250 millibar shear, it basically has this, and this is going to be interacting with that shear. And maybe early on, it'll help enhance the outflow and help it strengthen a little bit. But once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, that's when things get a bit more complicated. But with, with the latest track in, through Florida right there, it shouldn't have that for very long. And then it moves through the uh, the Atlantic Ocean. I think it's it's going to start losing tropical characteristics east of the Bahamas based off of what I am seeing right here. So definitely something interesting very early on right here, taking a look at this. So that's the wind shear right there. Another issue I have is the dry air, the relative humidity with this. If you take a look at this early on, once again, it's really good. But once it approaches Cuba, we're starting to see a little bit of more of drier air from the Gulf of Mexico potentially intrude this system as it's crossing through. So that's something to keep an eye on at with is because if that it penetrates the core right there, well, unless that system can fight it off, it's going to shut it down sooner rather than later. So this will then make landfall as around a category one hurricane, which I think is quite accurate right there. Do I no? this is not going to strengthen over land. I don't think it is. There's not enough brown ocean effect unless it gets goes through like Lake Okeechobee or something like that. Where it can, uh, where it can potentially do that, but I don't see that happening otherwise. But the, but er, so the key takeaway I'm seeing with this is the shear is a bit mixed. The dry air early on is very good. It gets a bit mixed in the Gulf of Mexico, but it beco it becomes less of an issue once you enter the Atlantic Ocean, according to this run right here. So. This is an interesting situation we're going to have to continue to keep an eye on right here. We're now about eight days out from development, and these models are not showing any any sign of stopping anytime soon. The Europeans also starting to pick up of some storm activity around that area around that time as well. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for you on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. If you want to help us out with data gathering, Storms United Discord server link is in the description. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.